is titled, How Can I Transform Other Graphs? And we're going to be transforming a circle today, which is considered a non-function. Why? Because you can, t uh, if you do the vertical line test, it's going to pass two points at the same time instead of just one. All right, so use, uh, by the end of the lesson, I will be able to transform non-functions such as circles as evidenced by completing the practice problems. So the directions say, use the graphs and equations of the three circles below with center 0, 0. What pattern do you notice and is there a connection between the radius and its equation? Okay, so all three of these are centered around 0, 0. We're not moving them quite yet. What we're looking at right now is the radius. Okay, so for the first uh, circle on the left, the equation is x squared plus y squared, wow, bless you, equals 9. Okay, so if there's a 9 right here and the radius is 3, you can count it out on your paper, 1, 2, 3. It's probably easier to count it on your own paper than it is off the screen. Um, but what do you notice between the 9 and the 3? Yes, somebody. Three times three. three times three. What do we call that? What's another word for that? Squaring it. Or depending which direction you're going, if you're going from here to here, you square root. If you're going from here to here, you square. Okay? So are you going, bless you, are you going from the equation to the radius or are you going from the radius to the equation? Okay? All right, let's make sure it works for all three. So this one we have x squared plus y squared equals 16. You count out that radius, you should have 4. Same thing. You're going to take the 16 and square root it, or you're going to take the 4 and you're going to square it, depending on which direction you're going. All right? And the third one has x squared plus y squared equals 4. It has a radius of 2. So for the next question, it says write your observation here. Your observation here. Write down what you observe about the difference between the equation and the radius. Put it into your own words. All right, then down at the bottom, it says sketch the graph of the next circle in the pattern and write its equation. So we had a radius of two, a radius of three, and a radius of four. So let's do a radius of 5, all right? We're still going to center it at 0, 0. So go ahead and put your center right at the origin. And then you're going to count 5 each direction. 5 to the right, put a point. Up 5, put a point. Left 5, put a point. Down 5, put a point. And then you're going to try and do a smooth circle between all four of those outside points. Don't go through the center, okay? And the first time you draw one, Sometimes students really struggle with it. So go around a couple times until you get it fairly smooth, and then you can come back in with your eraser and clean it up a little if it's not perfect. Okay, and then you're going to complete your equation. X squared plus Y squared equals what? 25. You take that radius of 5, you square it, so should, there should be a 25 right there. All right, any questions on problem number one? Pretty easy, right? Go ahead and turn over to the top of page 19. Up at the top of page 19, it says, sketch the graph of the circle that has the equation x squared plus y squared equals 81. Again, we're centered at 0, 0. We haven't moved it yet. We need to figure out what the radius is if the equation is equal to 81. What is that radius going to be? Nine, you're going to notice that this grid only goes up to eight. So you're going to approximate where the nine would be. It's going to make it huge. It's going to make it slightly off that grid. Okay, you're going to have a rather large circle. Sometimes that happens. The other option is, I guess you could scale your axes, but the, one, the numbers are already written in for you, so... They want it to kind of go slightly off the grid. All right? Any questions on problem number two? Again, to make your circle smooth, you might need to go around two or three times and then come back in with your eraser and kind of clean it up a little bit. Okay? All right.
right, the next three are drawn for you. Oh, good. Okay. Use the graph and the equations of three circles with different centers. So now we're going to start moving that center around, and we're going to see if we can figure out the pattern. What pattern do you notice now? Is there a relationship between the center of the circle and the equation? So notice these three all have a radius of 2 because they're all equal to 4, right? So the square root of 4 is 2, so they all have a radius of 2, but they're moved around to different quadrants. So this first one is over here in quadrant 3, this one's in quadrant 2, this one's in quadrant 1. So they're just moving the center. We want to see if we can figure out what is that pattern, okay? So if you come over here and you find the center of this first one on the left, does anybody know where that one is at? Thank you. Immediately. Jake, this says immediately. Yeah. Usually it says at teacher's convenience, but that one says immediately. Okay. So the center of this one, you go two to the left and two down. That puts the center at negative two, negative two, right? Everybody agree that it's negative two, negative two? Okay. But when you look at the equation, you have x plus two quantity squared plus y plus two quantity squared equals four. So what, do you, what is your observation about that. That's what it's going to ask you right here. What is your observation about that? What word would come to your mind to describe that? If the center is at negative 2, negative 2, but here you have a plus 2 and a plus 2. How would you describe that in your own words? Does anybody have a word they would use? Opposite, Opposite okay. So you should probably include in your observation something about the opposite, okay? Let's see if it's true for the other two as well. All right, so this one has a center two to the left and up two, which makes it negative two, positive two. And then when you look at the equation, you have the x plus two in this first set of parentheses and the y minus two in the second set of parentheses. So it appears to be the opposite as well. And then for the third one, the center is 2 to the right and up 2, which makes it positive 2, positive 2. And then when you look at the equation, you have minus, minus. Okay? So the observation appears to be true. Let's find the one circle that's missing. So we have quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3. Where's the circle going to go for this last one down here? Quadrant 4. So you're going to go in quadrant 4. You're going to go over two, down two, put a point. That's going to be your center. They all had a radius of two, so go two all four directions. Try and draw your circle as smooth as you can. And then we're going to fill in the missing parts. What are the signs here and here if you have positive two, negative two as your center? So what number goes here? Minus 2, and what goes here? And then what goes in here? 4. Right? You take that radius of 2 and you square it. Okay? Any questions on 3? You good? Okay. Flip over to the top of page 20. Page 20 says sketch a graph of the circle that has the equation x plus 5 quantity squared plus y minus 3 quantity squared equals 9. Okay, so you look at the numbers, you take their opposites, and that becomes your center. So the opposite of positive 5 is negative 5. The opposite of negative 3 is positive 3. So you count 5 to the left, up 3. That becomes your center. From there, you calculate the radius. If in the equation you have a 9, that means your radius is 3, because 3 squared is 9 or the square root of 9 is 3, however you want to write it. From that center, you go 3 each direction, and then you try and make a fairly smooth circle best you can. Okay? All right. Now we're going to look, try one, two that are a little more, uh, what's the word? 
not hard. No, they're not hard. They're just different. So example number one says, write the equation of each circle represented by the expression below. Part A, the circle with the center to seven and a radius of length one, one unit. Okay, one squared is one and the square root of one is one. So it is a little awkward one, but basically you just plug in a one here and then you take the opposite of the two. So you'd have x minus two, take the opposite of seven. So you'd have y minus seven plugged in there. Any questions on A? All right, for B, move it up a little bit. Probably right about there. Okay, for B it says the circle with center zero three, <coughs> excuse me, and the radius of length square root of two units. Okay, so we're gonna plug in the zero here, which means you could write x plus zero, you could write x minus zero, or you can just write x, like I did, and square it. All of those are technically correct, but the most simplified way is just to write it as x squared. Okay? Then you're gonna take the opposite of the three, which is minus three, plug that in here. And here might be the weird part for you. If the radius is the square root of two, we need to square the square root of two. Squaring the square root of two, those are inverse operations and they cancel each other out, right? So it's just the number that's inside, which is the two. Or another way to think about it is the square root of two times the square root of two is the square root of four, and the square root of four is two. So there's two ways to process that but basically there, it's two that gets plugged into the equation, okay? You will see some of those, so uh, that's, you just need to square it when you put it into the equation. Or if you have a number in your equation that's not a perfect square, like two is not a perfect square, then just say the square root of it. You might have to simplify it, but just say the square root of it, okay? All right, example number two, write the equation of each circle represented by the given diagram. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna locate that center. We went over three, up three. So what goes here and here? Minus three, minus three, right? Okay, then from the center to any of the points, you count how many units? Two, two. so you have a radius of two, so what number plugs in here? Four. All right, and example three, what is the center and the radius of the circle with the equation x minus three quantity squared plus y squared equals six? Who can tell me the center? What do you got? Three, zero? Yes, three, zero is correct. And what would the radius be? Not three, not two, not one. You would take the square root of this number, right? The square root of six is the square root of six. So just like up here, you would write the square root and you would put a six. Now, if you take your calculator and you punch in the square root of six and you hit equals, what's it gonna give you? a decimal, right? Somewhere between two and three. So once you find your center, then you would put your points halfway or partially the way between two and three units away, all four of them, and then you would draw your circle. So it wouldn't meet at exactly a corner, it would meet somewhere between two and three, whatever that decimal they give you, okay? All right, turn over to page 21. All right, up to page, uh, top of page 21. This is the page you're gonna do in your group of four. Answer these questions as best you can. You guys seem to grasp it pretty well, but if you have any questions,